Hey, my name's James Douglason and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about interest only versus repayment mortgages. What's better for you? How can you use them as an instrument to grow a property portfolio? Now, while you're here, make sure you do me a favor, do yourself a favor, smash that like button really quickly. Go on, smash it till it turns blue. That helps me with YouTube. Also, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell, follow me on my property journey, follow me while I invest my money in growing a property portfolio for my daughter. You can see all the refurbishments, all of the intricacies along the way. So do subscribe to the channel. Now, interest only versus repayment mortgage. Now, there's two different types of mortgage, and I'm gonna go into detail here on exactly when you should use each and which one you should be using as an investor. So do keep following along. Now, I want you to comment below any questions you've got. I'll reply to all your questions in future videos. Now, firstly, let's have a look at repayment mortgages. Now, the name says it all here. So a repayment mortgage is a mortgage that's paying down the balance. This is the most common type of mortgage that you would get on a residential mortgage, meaning you live in the property yourself. Now, as you can see, if we borrowed £100,000, over time, the money that we owe the bank is going to go down. So it starts off going down on a small percentage because the interest on a repayment mortgage is generally front loaded. So it have a higher interest payments initially that will go down over time. Also, as you're paying down the balance, the money you owe is less. And so you'll have less money that you need to be paying off because you owe an interest percentage on a smaller amount of money. So let's look at it as if we had £100,000 and we were assuming we were on an interest rate of around 3%, which is normal pretty much around now. So the year one balance or year zero, you'd start with 100 grand. You'd still owe 100 grand, right? Then you'd make your monthly payments each month. And by the end of year one, you would owe £97,000, right? So <coughs> you cleared off some of the interest that you owe them and you cleared off some of the balance as well, which is pretty good. So great. The next year, you now only owe interest on £97,000, not a hundred. So this year, you're still paying the same amount of money, but the balance is getting chipped away at. So you owe slightly, so it's going more paying off the debt that you owe, uh, if that makes sense, because it's a smaller amount of money that you're paying interest on. So the next year, second year, by the end of the second year, you owe 94,460, which is great, right? It's going down in the right direction. Third year goes down even more. And then when you get to the end of the loan, then suddenly the payments start making a huge difference. Like if you're in the 23rd year, look here, uh, every year you're knocking off nearly six grand here off the balance, which is crazy, right? And so initially we were knocking off like two and a half grand here, two two 2,700 off the, 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 um, the balance that we owe. But because each year, the interest is on a smaller amount of capital that we owe the bank still, it's paying off more of the loan, which is good. Now, that's really, really important to, to understand, right? Now, let's have a look at interest only as a model. So this is an option more commonly used on a buy-to-let mortgage. So let's have a look here, right? So if you borrowed 100 grand in 25 years, you still owe 100 grand, right? which is crazy. So it doesn't go down at all over the duration of the loan. And you're going to keep paying every single month. And all you're paying is the interest. And then next year, more, next month, more interest is due. And your monthly payments will never be chipping away at that amount. So that will never, ever change. Now, so like year zero, you're 100 grand, all the way up to year 25, you still owe £100,000. Now, what's good about that? What's bad about that? Which one should you be working on? Keep watching because I'm going to not only tell you which one you should be using to invest, but also the power of compounding and how this will make a significant difference if you want to invest in property. So the repayment mortgage, they want you to retire. So repayment mortgages are generally 
people that are employed. Uh, that are, well, no, not necessarily employed. It could be self-employed, but it's for your prime residency, the one that you live in. Now, why would they want you to pay that back? The reason is because eventually you're going to retire, and as you get older, for most people your salary will start to decrease. And of course, when you're on a pension, it's highly likely that your pension is gonna be less than the peak that you were earning while you were an employee. There's more risk to them. If you don't pay it off and you unfortunately passed away, for example, then they've got a debt owed that might not be covered by selling the house. And so in the house that we all live in ourselves, the bank wants us to start clearing that debt to get that mortgage paid down in a way that the risk is significantly reduced to them, right? Hope that makes sense. And so as you get older, it's very, very important to the bank that you don't owe them lots and lots of money. And that's very, very important. Now, with a with uh, an interest only mortgage. These are more for buy to lets. Uh, and, and so the difference here is you're not paying the payment, really, are you? So what's going to happen is you're going to get a tenant, they're going to pay you rent, and that rental payment will come to you. And then you will pay the mortgage company and you will keep the difference. That's your profit each and every month. Now, the risk to the bank is significantly reduced because if your tenant stops paying rent or they unfortunately passed away, you'll get a new tenant in. And so it's running as a business. It's not reliant on you or your age or your ability to pay it down. It's reliant on somebody else paying the money that is owed to the bank. So the rent comes in, it goes to you, you pay that to the bank and you keep the difference, as I said. Now, also what's on the side here is it, like house prices tend to double every single 10 years, right? And so the asset that they might have loaned on was initially worth a hundred thousand pounds, but in 10 years, that's gonna be worth 200,000 pounds. And so that's really important to understand the risk that goes down. The rent probably in that time has also gone up, but the money that you're paying back to the bank, as long as interest rates don't change, will be the same. And maybe it could have gone up a little bit if interest rates have gone up, but it also could have gone down if interest rates have dropped. And so the consideration with an interest only from the bank side is, are you able to afford to pay them back? And they want you to make some profit. If you're not going to make profit, then they won't lend you on that. Now, let's have a look at compounding and see how this makes a big difference to the decision here on which mortgage you go for, interest only or repayment. Now, we're, we're talking numbers here about 100 grand house because I think that's easier to understand here. Um, and so year one, the house was worth 100 grand, right? Which is brilliant. Now, it takes roughly on average, now this has happened since 1066, but we can't guarantee that this is going to happen all the time going forward. But there's a high probability because there's 25 million houses in the UK and 70 million people. We don't have enough houses, hence the fact that we're building skyscrapers, we've got HMO properties, and all of these things that go together, it's highly likely that prices will keep rising more people are having babies this and people are living longer as well these are all considerations so year one your house is worth 100 grand great in 10 years there's a high chance a high probability that it will be worth 200,000 pounds now obviously different regions of the UK before you jump in the comments and kill me on this uh, some regions of the UK don't go up as fast as others but some do go up faster so on average house prices double every 10 years. So we're saying in year 10, the house is worth 200,000 pounds. Now, if you're on interest only, you still owe 100 grand. You've got two, uh, sorry, you've got 100 grand in equity. The house is now worth 200 and you've got 100 in equity. Now, year 20, so 10 years after that, where a lot of people go wrong is they think that the house is just going to go up by 100 grand again. No, the 200 grand is going to double to 400 grand, which is crazy, right? Now, 
you've suddenly got £300,000 in equity if you're on an interest-only mortgage because you still owe the hundred grand, But you've got £300,000 in your net worth that's sitting there and that, if you sold the house after taxes, could be your money, right? And so that's a real consideration here. Now, in year 30, mortgages are generally 25-year terms, but there are 30-year terms out there. In year 30, the house that was 100 grand on average is now going to be worth 800 grand. So that's crazy, right? 800 grand. Uh, and so this is normally what happens. So I bought a house in 1999 in Dorking in Surrey. So let's just say the year 2000. And in 2020, that house was valued at 250. Do you know what my biggest regret was? I didn't get more. I didn't get more. That's my biggest regret. I could have afforded two back then, but I was really conservative with investing. I was a little scared. I wish that I took more. I have had more than doubling there. So you think by 2010, that house should have been worth 100 grand. Let's just, I bought it for 45. Let's just say it's 50, right? So in 2000, I bought it for 50. In 2010, it should have been worth 100. In 2020, it should have been worth 200,000. Didn't work like that. It actually went from 45 grand all the way up to 250, five times what I paid initially for it in 20 years, which is crazy. And that's the power of compounding. Now, that might not always happen. Prices will go up and down, but on average, in a 10 year cycle, normally house prices double, which is really, really powerful. Now, that means the risk to the bank is significantly reduced because if you don't pay the mortgage or you run away, they've got an asset that they'll repossess. Now, they'd rather repossess an 800,000 pound asset when you owe them 100 grand than a 100 grand house when you owe them 100 grand. So the risk is significantly reduced to them. Now, along the way, you can, re you can release equity as well, which is really exciting. And this is where people get really wealthy, when they take money out of properties and reinvest this. And this is exactly what I've done. And you should go and check out all the other videos on my channel and just see exactly how this works. Look, before we go into this bit, you got so far in the video and you didn't like it already, Give me a quick like on the video, guys. That really, 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 really helps me with YouTube. And that will help me get to more people uh, in the market uh, on YouTube. And also comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this. Would you go interest only or would you go repayment? What are you more comfortable with? Or any questions, comment below as well. Um, that would be cool. So look, year one, your, your, your house is worth 100 grand, right? So you can't take any more money out if you're 100 grand. But in year 10, your house assumptively is worth £200,000. Now, here's the thing. You owe £100,000 to the bank still, right? Does that make sense? You owe 100000 because if you're on interest only, you haven't paid any of it off. So you owe hundred grand to the bank still. Now, what's different here is you now will be looking at a value of two hundred. Now, you can borrow against that 75% meaning you can borrow £150,000 against that property by refinancing. That means that you'd now owe the bank 150000 but they would give you fifty, right? And that fifty is then used to buy your second or third or fourth property or whatever it is, right? You can go and invest in other properties. Now, if you left it, and you refinanced at year 20, your house would be worth 400,000 pounds. So you're able at that point, you owe 100 still, because that hasn't changed, right? You still owe 100 because you're on interest only. You owe 100,000 pounds. Now, here's the difference here, is you at this stage can look to borrow 200,000 because that would be mean your borrowing would go up to 75% again and you'd be borrowing 300,000 pounds off the bank and they'd give you an extra 200 into your bank and then you could go and invest again and this is what I do right my properties go up I release equity and then I go and buy more now I've always got security because they're only going to lend you 75% of the value so even if house prices dropped by like 50 or 20%, if they drop by 20%, which 
very unlikely but if they did you've still got some equity in that right you still have five percent equity now in year 30 your house is worth 800 grand you'd now be able to pull out five hundred thousand pounds of equity imagine what you could do with that right that's a lumpy deposit even in 30 years it's going to be able to buy a number of properties with that and this is the power of compounding and releasing equity and that's what i want you to think about now other considerations interest only or repayment now if you pay repayment if you had a mortgage that's um a hundred grand you might be paying five or six hundred pounds a month right now, if you had a mortgage that was um, on a lower interest rate on it was only the interest, you might just pay around 100 a month for that. And so if you're an investor, it's all about the cash flow. So say, for example, you had a 100 grand house and you were able to get a thousand pound in rent, right? A thousand pound in rent. If you took a repayment mortgage, your payments might be five or six hundred pounds a month for that mortgage meaning you've got 400 pounds left over out of that 400 pounds you've got to pay for repairs you've got to pay for insurance you've got to pay tax all of this stuff your, your money's pretty much going to disappear quite quickly whereas if you went the interest only route you've got a thousand pound rent your mortgage payment let's just say it's a hundred pounds a month now you've got 900 pounds very easily out of that you can pay tax insurance and still leave yourself six seven hundred pounds a month that you can use to cash flow your lifestyle and live off, right? And so that's why if you're an investor, interest only is really the way to go. You want to increase the cash flow. Now, paying off the mortgage, it's getting paid off with inflation because today, 100 grand is a lot of money. But in 30 years, when your house is worth 800,000 pounds, you still owe the bank 100. But if you wanted to, you could sell the house for 800,000, pay the mortgage back and keep 700,000 pounds for yourself, right? This is really powerful stuff when you really understand the power of compounding and getting the right type of interest. It's better to be interest only to get increased cash flow because you're going to also make money with the like the, the value of the house going up as well. Uh, and so just the, the few hundred pounds that you might make paying it on a repayment, make it more risky. Repayment mortgages are more suitable for personal stuff, like your personal house that you live in and reducing the balance on that. Now, I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Repayment mortgages versus interest only. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Give me a like on this channel. And also join us on this journey where I go out and buy properties at auctions, off market. I'm doing renovations. I'm building three bedroom houses into four bedroom, two bedroom houses into three bedroom, turning studio flat recently into a one bedroom flat. Documenting all of that. And also I'm doing this with my daughters. I've got two daughters, Georgia and Amelie, and I'm building a portfolio of properties for them. I've already got mine and now my goal is to build them a cash flowing prop portfolio that they can use to fund their lifestyle and live a life beyond their wildest dreams. So join us on this journey. By doing that, you need to subscribe to the channel and go and check out all the other videos. I've got a great video coming up very soon about how I bought a house from auction. The house next door was worth 80,000. Mine was secured for 60,000. Fully detailed, live in the auction, I'll show you all the due diligence I did, all the checks that I did, what I did in the auction. You'll see me buying the property live. Uh, and all the excitement that goes along with that. That's a very detailed video that's on this channel. Uh, if it's not on there today, it's coming out very soon. So make sure you check that out. I'm James Nicholson. Join us on this journey. Stay blessed. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye for now.